Welcome back to another pro player coaching. Today we have Ryan Levine with us, who's going to be taking us through some spiral plays. Uh, Ryan has um, been playing this deck quite a lot and topped a few events with it as well, correct? Yeah, I um, topped, uh, I got third at Dallas um, with uh, the three, quick fix three drone, the machine dude deck. Um, top there two at San Diego, um, which was the first event after the new list. And then I just won ARG Orlando, which was the most recent event. So. Yeah. I like to believe that I am somewhat familiar with this deck. <laughs> I'm okay. <at> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's a, yeah, you've, you've had a lot of experience with Spyro, not just in its current form with post list, mm -hmm. but also uh, previous list as well. So that's yeah. really cool. And um, today we are uh, just going to go through, as usual with this series, um, I get someone on, they take us through some of the plays, the mindset that you should be having during these games, what you should be thinking about, what you should be taking into consideration as you play through a duel when looking at your hand kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoy this and let's just begin. So first up, we've got, uh, let's look at the list first, actually. So I believe this is basically just your list, uh, yes, card for this, card. Uh, uh, yeah, I believe just, I mean, yeah, uh, this is the card for card list that I just played at Orlando. And um, I really like this list. Uh, this is one of the only events that I played. Like I was very, very, very confident going into it. And after playing the event, I really can't think of anything I would change. I think I maybe change the extra deck a little bit, but uh, actually, I didn't play Buster. I played Mechaba. That's that is the only difference. But everything like the main deck and the side deck is the same. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I was actually going to ask about that, but because uh, that makes sense. Um. Yeah. So I'm assuming this is a blind second list. Yeah. So uh -huh. um, in this format, how I how I think about it is um. Uh, obviously, like when Spiral first came out, we had three quick fix, three with three uh, drone. We played a machine dupe. It was uh, going first. You know, you went first, and you and uh, set rotation as well. You went first. You tried to establish as much as you could, and then generally speaking, like when you went first and established your board, there wasn't a whole lot they could do about it. Uh, now we don't. We only have one quick fix, only one drone. There, are, um, it's like it was less consistent than the previous version. So we had to find ways um, to improve its consistency. And the way that I found that to happen, and a lot of other players found it um, as well around the same time, is Spiral Tough was very popular at San Diego. It was the first event after, uh, it was the first like big event uh, after the new list. And I guess a lot of people figured out that when you don't have drone and you don't really have a way to start your combo, it's a lot harder to go first. You have to go second um, and then use Tough to look at their top card um, and then use Agent. And that's how you do, do your combo now. So Tough is kind of like, a replacement for what the old drone used to be, but it also affects the board. So it's unusable going first, but it actually like destroys cards going second. Yeah, yeah that, that makes sense. Um, you've also got a side deck here that looks like it's primarily geared for like almost smoke screening into like a going first deck. So you've got like yeah, an artifact so... engine and mind crushes as well. Yeah, so um. Uh, when I first built it for San Diego, my original intention was to blind second game one, and then if I lost a game, um, I would choose to go first, put in all my going first cards. That didn't work out so well for me. Uh, I actually got the top 32 feature match, and I just opened like Ash, Ash, Gamma, Strike, Strike, and then my next <laughs> card was Strike. And I was like, okay. So like, so like that was obviously just like, just, you know, like one game doesn't like dictate, you know, like just because it happened one game doesn't mean that like, it's wrong, but what I learned and what, um, actually, uh, my roommate, uh, took this deck to ARG Hartford. Uh, I couldn't make it. So I gave him my deck and he won. So that was a week or two weeks before Orlando. So like if anything, you know, so that was another thing that, um, and he played the deck in a different way that I did. He kept choosing second after siding. And um, that wasn't something that I actually would have thought of on my own. Cause that just doesn't, you know, it just seemed like, well, when you have the choice to go first, it's just better to go first but tough and evenly matched mainly tough tough is just so good and i actually just found the deck to be so inconsistent going first that going second is just so much better and and a lot of other people found that too so when i played a going second mirror i would expect them to make me go first uh game two so i wanted to have as many cards i could put in to like go first as possible and i would still usually lose like that is actually how much better <laughs> i think going second is than going first in the mirror right, right now is like i had all that i had the sanctum scythe and mind crushes and it was still a challenge to win going first so you think it's just like the six card is just so much so so important. i don't think it's the six card i think it's just like tough like as weird as it so basically how 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 it um sort of works is like 
Similarly, uh, I think a good analogy is actually uh, True Draco, uh, Demise, how that deck um, wanted to choose second. Because when you go first and you tribute off all your True Draco spells and traps and you're not actually popping anything, you're yeah, just no negative you there, yourself. Yeah. If you go like, you know, like Blind Call, Agent Summon Tough, or you go, you know, like Drone, Agent, and make Helix, and you get Ashed, you just neg one. You just used her. You like, I guess you even sort of, and they get like an extra card right mm -hmm. um when you go second and you go tough pop your card agent pop your card then you then you get ashed on on your helix you already pop two of their cards yeah like it simplifies the game state so much and then um one thing i did that no one else was doing was i played the second rescue and i didn't play the second rescue for combos i played it to draw it i played it because i wanted like when i went tough agent and then i got ashed I want to set rescue on their turn, add back tough on my turn, add back agent and, and, and just do it again. Mm -hmm. And you, and like rescue is just like salvage. You can resolve three times and then it's monster reborn after you resolve it three times. It's actually like in the grind. It is an absurd card. All right. So I think if I had to put one thing that makes this deck different than other ones, it's the second rescue, but okay. Yeah. I mean, it's a, uh, all makes sense. And your deck looks pretty streamlined. Um, I really like the build and stuff and, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the deck list. So let's just jump into the duo now. So first up, we've got um, yeah, I'm gonna assuming that uh, so this is my friend Vlad. Shout out to Vlad for getting me this replay. Um, he's playing against, uh, I believe it's invoked. So he's uh, this is where the mecha would have been. <laughs> would yeah, have exactly. Been helpful. <laughs> yeah. Um, so opening hand looks. So I'm looking at it, like this okay. is like, like this is exactly what I want to see when I'm when I'm playing the. Is deadly maxi obviously is insane um against invoked it's not as good but like um this opening sleeper uh opening sleeper is usually pretty bad but when the rest of your hand is as good as this is like tough rota is you know great you know that's just tough agent and then um terraforming probably for the next turn to get you like a quick fix to bring something back it just you just have more stuff to do that you're putting cards in your graveyard to actually j just summon sleeper like naturally Mm -hmm. um, because Helix is probably going to get stopped. Like usually, Helix is getting stopped. So, um, this version of the deck is less reliant on resolving Helix, and it, and it for the most part is just like you grind them out with tough and agent, and then if you resolve Helix, then the game is just over. But um, here, like Invoked is a weird matchup because you don't really lose to the Invoked card. You kind of just lose to like the other cards they you know have in their deck. So. It's like, okay, <laughs> that's kind of scary. Um, uh, knowledge, like, knowledge is kind of scary, uh, but... Yeah, um, so it's, the the deck's, like, obviously quite a like, tiny engine, so they're going to have, like, so much hate for you, like, yeah. all kinds of hand traps and stuff. Yeah, that's pretty much how they built the deck at this point. Like, okay, I... so if he were to fuse there, I would actually have to think about using Maxi because it's, like, pretty... It's, like, very likely he has Gamma, I think. Like, I don't know, that's a bit iffy. But whether so you here, should maxi the fusion or not? Yeah, whether you like the turn because you're only getting getting one draw off of it here, and like if he has gamma, I think you like just kind of lose. And like the one you actually just don't need the draw because your hand is so good. I think that if you were to invocation there, I don't think I'd even maxi. I think I'd just hold maxi for like maybe a turn like after he scapegoats. Like when he uses tough and you know hits his like tries to hit the back row there. Like at that scapegoat, I would also hold maxi. And I'd probably save. Oh, gamma. Okay, so so there's gamma, or you max see here on the gamma and just like see what happens. But he, um, um, so he's protecting that one back row, and he didn't fuse yeah. turn one. Like, well, what? Yeah. Like, what are you thinking at this point? Like, how would you be um, approaching this? Protect. It's weird. He protected the back row. Uh, I mean, like, I'm not too familiar with. I mean, like, invoked. Invoked isn't a deck that's so heavily played that like there's not a whole, whole lot like super standard about it right now. So I'd have to guess it's like strike or mind crush, like more than likely, but there's obviously no guarantee here. Um I'm thinking about if you terraform for some I think you just terraforming in your resort for like another tough? Uh you have Rota for another tough, so probably like just something I mean, probably like maybe last resort. Um I'd probably resort for either last resort or drone. And then I'd Maybe even Rota for tough right now. Maybe hold Rota for next turn. Uh, okay. But I don't think I get another tough or an agent. Quick fix. See, I don't necessarily agree with quick fix there because your 
Tough is getting shuffled back, so there's nothing in your graveyard to actually use for Quick Fix. And um, Quick Fix actually is, like, not that good. <laughs> like, the card's at one, but, like, look at this, right? So, like, so like next turn, like, he's not summoning Quick Fix. You know, like, that's just not happening. Mm-hmm. Um, he's probably going to roto for Tough. Like, I would actually rather get a lot... All right, this... <laughs> Okay, this is unfortunate. This is this is the part where I'm like, oh man, this this is like one of those games where I might lose to Invoked. <laughs> um, like they just have so many cards on me now, and like I guess at this point he should fuse for something. Like I believe his Aliester is still set up in his grave. Yeah, it's still set up in his graveyard. Even if he just makes like the water thing, like that's actually somewhat difficult to deal with. Um, for uh, for Spiral. Yeah, I mean, like, sort of, yeah, because you have to, like, drone... Because you can't target it, right? Unless I'm just totally yeah, forgetting what Yeah, it's untargetable. Yeah, you have to use um, drones on field effect to, like, boost Sleeper and give it extra attack or something like that. Or or make, like, Boral Load. But, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, well. So it looks like right. uh, a pretty this tough situation. This, this is when I panic a little bit. This is when I go cards in hand, and they say seven, and I'm like, uh... <laughs> uh I'm like, oh, no. So, okay, so this one, Maxi here, he's already used the driver. I don't think he plays two drivers. So this is when you're actually trying to cycle Maxi for, like, an extra card. So notably, um, Maxi on the Gamma last turn would have put a monster in your graveyard. So Resort could have shuffled back Mac, could have shuffled back Maxi and then kept the tough in Grave. So Searching Quick Fix would have actually given him something to summon back. Mm, right. So okay. um, shuffling back Hand Traps off Resort instead of Spiral Monsters is, like, is like super important i think um and obviously like there's no way that he would have known this is how the turn would, would have played out but when maxi on the gamma i think might have been i don't i don't necessarily i don't think i really like maxi because like because like you're maxing for one here like i guess if you weren't gonna maxi on the gamma i don't see why you would maxi now because i don't think this deck is summoning another monster yeah because you're always, you're always only under, gonna get under, like, like one card anyway kind of thing yeah so here is like this is where like I kind of wish we had last resort, not quick fix, but we can obviously fix that right now. Is you can just act again and just get last resort. So something about um, spiral against there's something that I think uh, like the shortcomings of Trickstar and uh, Invoked and a lot of like what I will call like the bad deck. So here is where I would go resort effect search last resort quick last resort onto tough. Um, I think a lot of like the bad decks like can't beat. A monster equipped with last resort like they just can't they just have no way of doing it unless they have like um unless they make like a link a link play for um like boral load um they just like nothing in the invoked deck kills a monster that cannot be targeted or destroyed you know they just they just can't mm-hmm. so i think um, it's a it's quite natural for some people sometimes to just be like oh uh, last resort that that's always going to be equipped to sleeper because that's like, yeah that's the but lock. it's actually but it's really not it's it's last resort and you see oh I, I was why would he set evenly match all right <laughs> i disagree with that i don't think you should set evenly match i mean i think it's because yeah, his hand size actually, is uh too big that's why say, oh that okay that makes more sense all right that makes more sense uh like evenly match is like a card where like i don't think you should okay so now we're gonna see what that backer was it might have been strike uh, a resort f okay so now he's using re- resort um this is game um, one, right? So he's I'm actually just... maining that evenly. So he actually chose yeah. to go first despite maining yes. evenly. That's weird. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, so resort, I'm. He should get okay. Last resort, and then he's probably going to last resort healing. So to protect from ogre. Okay. So here, um, to roll is somewhat interesting. So here, I think you you still you might not. So. If you Helix and he ogres you, you can no longer summon. Okay, I'm not sure why he searched last resort there if he wasn't going to equip it. I'm not. Mm, I'm on the fence about this one. I'm not sure if Droll actually changes. Okay, so he's going to get ogred. So I'm pretty sure the reason he used last resort there was to play around ogre and then just didn't equip it because he got drolled. So now he has to add back from his graveyard. Um, and I guess he's going to add back Agent. But. He could just not add back and just summon Sleeper and then... Yeah, that is... He could also do that. Okay, yeah, yeah that's good. an option, but I'm still... I That was weird. I think I would have equipped Last Resort there and just gotten Mastermind from my deck. 
Uh, Master Plan is really, really good. <laughs> Master Plan is okay. So that's another thing. Is actually a, a lot of people don't actually know like all of Helix. Helix has a bunch of effects. It like it can add from hand. It can add or summon from deck or grave. So um, when you get Droll Ogre like that, you can still add from grave, which is like pretty pretty relevant. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think thinking back on the like thinking about this more. Okay, so that was good to show back back Maxi. Like uh, getting the last resort to play around Ogre, I agree with completely. And right. I was afraid that was I I I I've been afraid that was scapegoat for like ever since he gambled it and then he didn't end phase it because you can't end because you can't scapegoat the turn you summon. Uh, so yeah. this is where so this is where I've kind of been afraid this was scapegoat like the whole time and I but it's still like like you're dead now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like this is this, this is how you die, pretty much. Um, but uh, on the on that draw play, so you're saying that he should have. Um, Equip the last resort to double helix and then use the helix effect to um, get to get master plan from his deck even under a draw. So. Yeah, um, you just summon it from your deck and they can and, and they they can't deal with it. Like there's you know you you have a twenty hundred defense monster and then you have um, the helix equipped with last resort. Like the odds of you dying through both of those cards are so low. Mm -hmm. um, and then like next turn you just like win because like your hand is like sleeper you know rota terraforming like plus you're resolving last resort presumably and helix again uh that i would yeah <laughs> um yeah. i think that would have been better like i can kind of understand like i i believe the reason he used last resort to get uh, or the reason he used resort to get last resort was to play around ogre and i'm not a hundred percent sure why he just Droll didn't use it changed his mind on that one yeah like yeah, so going know. into game two for siding, what's your sort of okay. game plan there? So against Invoked, I'm trying to think of what I actually do against Invoked. I don't play against this deck very frequently. This is probably the deck I have the least experience with, which is interesting because you're going to get to hear my thoughts about it like unrehearsed. <laughs> um, so there's no Mechaba here, so I'd side out Reaper for sure. Uh, if there was Mechaba um, going first, I'd probably still side out Reaper. Um, you probably still twins. choose to go second, right? Or would um, you choose to go first? Against these types of decks, I don't against these decks i don't think evenly matched is super great against them mm -hmm. and i think just setting up like a spiral monster is like like just setting up a guy equipped with last resort is like good enough but um i think i'm choosing to go first or second it's tough i'd put in a twin and chaos hunter for sure yeah um i don't think i'd put in sanctums or scythe i wouldn't put in magical spring that's only for for pendulum Mind Crush is a bit iffy. Like you can Mind Crush just like Gammas. Like that's pretty sick. When you Mind Crush a Gamma, like you pretty much win if you do that. Uh, and then you can Mind Crush their um, Invocation when they when when they add it, and then they're pretty much like dead in the water. Yeah. Um. So it's it's tough. But so Twin is in. I think Twin is. So really he's actually good. chose to go second here. Yeah, I choose to go second, and I think that's fine. I think in this with, with these, like it's pretty much okay to do either one. Okay, so. That's wrong. Um, is can you can you hover over meltdown for me? I don't I don't know if meltdown is once per turn or not, but I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. So basically, how I feel about um, this is the, the the same thing I feel about with uh, tricksters. It's a little bit different with tricksters because their field spell is not once per turn. But um, I'd save Ash for um, the normal summons, yeah. like when they commit to to their to their normal summons. Um. Yeah. Because at this stage, because, yeah, he could have just had the... Because it literally is just like, they just go Meltdown, and you're like, Ash. You know what I mean? Where if he goes Meltdown, search Aliester, summon Aliester, and then you Ash it, he can have 10 Aliester in his hand. He can't summon them this turn. Yeah. So I think his reasoning and his line of thought was that he's got the... He has the, he has the Gamma. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Gamma is really powerful, holding it to protect his resort from, from an Ogre or something. Yeah, because like you want it on your turn, okay. so you have here, the ability this, to. I was actually thinking about. I'm not sure what he's going to draw here to make this good, but th that makes it pretty good. So uh, here, you you might just like, ugh, twinning is so risky because like like this is there are a couple lines of play here. I think like I don't think any of them are like 100 percent like one is better than the other if I thought about it more. But your options are twin discarding sleeper hitting the back row and his field spell uh, to avoid that from happening. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay well um and then the other was just resort like straight up 
um, to get quick fix and then you get assault and just hope that that set is not strike or cyclone. Mm -hmm. Think about it now. I actually can't think of a single back row that would be to make you lose. Like if it's scapegoat, then that's just what it is. And you can kill like the problem is you're just running sleeper. I think if he drew any other card in his entire deck, other than, than sleeper, he would have a hundred percent twin discarding sleeper or twin discarding what, whatever that card was. Yeah. And because it was Sleeper, he got, like, tricked into not doing it because Sleeper is, like, too valuable of a resource. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it actually is. I think when your options are, like, lose or, <laughs> you know, like, because of this happening, like, yeah, he's, like, in a really, really bad spot. Um, I think the, the twinning there is actually, like, when thinking about it, I, I think there isn't really any reason at all why you wouldn't just... Uh twin discard pop back because you don't have because you won't have access to sleeper um thing then but, then but we, no, no no like i'm you, agreeing with you i think that twinning is better but yeah. like i and i i i understand the thought process behind not twinning but i don't mm -hmm. agree with it but um because you'd be shuffling back the sleeper in the end phase anyway so yeah it's not yes. too big of a deal or or you could technically add it back with the with the heel you wouldn't add it back with the helix but you could te technically add it back with the helix but yeah. um I mean, how I would, I mean, like, I mean, I guess I'm going to say, like, I would have played out totally differently where, like, I would have waited to Ash the summon of Aliester, and then he wouldn't have been able to summon Blue Guy, so I would have not gamut, and then his uh, his desires would have resolved, but that's fine. I would have twin discarding Sleeper, uh, activate Resort, and then even if he has Gamma, or even if he has Ogre, I have Gamma to protect my Resort. Yeah, so, okay. although, although the deck would have been shuffled, so I hit Goods, you would there. Okay, well that's how you. That's how he wins this game. Wait, did he pass? Um, okay, that because he doesn't want to discard a sleeper. Um, oh, but and there's also Mecha Book and discard a spell. I guess. Okay, so this is when you. All right, this is yeah. now we're now we're in in business. I think so. I think you had to wait a turn to be able to draw on like a yeah, bait for draw to, to bait the Mecha But I was thinking about like, all right, I don't see a way that. Okay, he's baiting it with. I'm confused. It should be the <laughs> other way around, I guess. Uh, I think so. Maybe. If he doesn't have a spell to negate with Mechaba, then, like, you just win here. Then that's hilarious, but... <laughs> but, um... Yeah. That's... Hmm. So, like, at this point, uh, he uh, he doesn't have a spell, so we know that, okay, he's only got monsters wow. in his hands. Alright, this is over. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, well, this went... Wait, what? Oh, is, oh is he getting quick fix, I guess? Okay. Okay. Well, you could just yeah, not use quick fix in that scenario. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't know. It's uh, the problem is that he had. So I don't. I'm not sure. I would agree with him sending assault. Uh, earlier, like he he goods to send assault instead of rescue, which I think rescue is like generally a more valuable card in the graveyard than assault. Um. So like here, like he has a soul and doesn't actually do anything because he's gonna get tough and he's gonna try to pop the mechaba with tough. That doesn't actually accomplish. And like even if he does, and if he does that, that's great. But it doesn't actually accomplish much. Oh, okay, never mind. The soul made this possible. I forgot. Oh, but if you had rescue, you just twin discarding anyway. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> and he already he actually just already had twin anyway. So this doesn't matter. Um, or it didn't matter which which, which one he sent here. So mm -hmm. um, rescue here is pretty good. Like. I'd, okay, well, I definitely, I might set it to add back sleeper, but probably not. I think you just set twin here, okay, or that I guess. Either one is like acceptable, but so this is what I was saying. I think um, when I said like last game, uh, when I would have just like equipped last resort to the to the um, helix and then summon master plan, because mm -hmm. like they can't deal with this. They have they have to discard the aliester to deal with this, and then you just draw two cards, or or you search two. Cause, um, he actually just passed anyway, so he didn't he have the honest passed, for it. Yeah. Oh, because he already discarded the Aliester for uh, negate to negate the quick fix. All right, so yes, this is where you true. just search rescue and you just win. Like you search your second rescue unless you sided one out, which sometimes you do, um, and then the game is just like way, way over. So, so he's actually going to use tough first, I think, before master plan. Mm, yeah. Okay, so it's going to be banished, which is unfortunate. 
Um, so you think you probably would like use? I'm pretty master sure plan. I would have just. Uh, okay, if you use master plan, then it can get banished, and then you're like kind of sick. But this is where you have to. You can you can twin discarding agent, or yeah. So if if you miss your blind agent here, which you probably will, you which can he twin has, yeah. discarding. Yeah, which he did. You can twin discarding agent targeting your own rescue and his in, and his magical meltdown. Um, then banish rescue from grave. Um, yeah. So I think that's what you have to do here. Is you twin okay or not? So you you actually just win this turn if you do that. Uh, assuming mm -hmm. I mean like pretty much you uh, you twin discarding agent targeting your own rescue. Um, and his meltdown. You banish rescue, get agent. Um, you get helix, and then even if they ash your master plan effect in grave, you can just helix. Um, you can helix it back, which just means they have to deal with it again. Like they're even if you don't win that turn, um, you I put think, yourself in such a good. position. I think you put yourself in such an advantageous position that there's no reason to. Yeah. And then now you're putting yourself where he, you're just giving him more chances to Mechaba with this. Um, but all in all, I think, uh, this is a much, this is a winning position, I believe. Like I, I'm now find it very unlikely that Spiral loses this game. Mm -hmm. Like just because the Mechaba is just like the Mechaba in, in, in a simplified game state such as, okay, well that could be how, <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to stop saying that <laughs> every, every time I think something is unwinnable, something that I, something happens. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, well, you try to get it. Ooh, spell. Okay, so, so what happened there is um, he called monster the past three times, and it was spell every time, and then he called spell and it called monster. <laughs> and, like, and like that's funny, but it's like I don't know enough about what like the the standard like invoked list looks like to say whether they play more monsters or or, or spells. But like, if he thought monster was like correct, just because it hits spell a couple times doesn't mean it isn't. However, if you just see a bunch of spells, like they've played a ton of spells now, um, invoked might play more spells. I'm trying to think of what spells they they must play. Three terraforming, three meltdown. That's six. Three desires. That's nine. Uh, three cyclone. That's twelve. Three scapegoat. Fifteen. Because we just saw scapegoat in the previous game, and I will assume that that is a three of or a zero of. Yeah. That's at least fifteen spells. Um, so I mean, the oh, for the monster lineup and the spell books and the spell books, I'd assume at least two secrets and and one knowledge. So that's at least eighteen spells. So I think there might be more spells than monsters in this deck. Um, mm -hmm. The monsters just seem to be hand polyester traps. and like hand traps. Yeah. So all right, now we're here, and um, so this is the turn where it's unwinnable, right? <laughs> now we're here. This is the turn. I've declared it. <laughs> this is the turn where we win, in theory. <laughs> uh, there we go. Yes. Okay. This is the turn where we win. You see. And they and his deck can do nothing about it. His oh. deck can do absolutely nothing about that. Um, they have to play Eclipse, which could actually add to the spells that they might play. So Book that actually Eclipse. just I think Did yeah, pretty much play Book of Eclipse to out this, which um, some people do mm. to combo with um, uh, the Fire Invoke. If you Eclipse them and then some of the Fire Invoke, so. All right, it's over. <laughs> I think I think it's over. Place, huh? Yeah, I think it's over. I'm pretty sure this is. Yep, there we go. All right, that is eight thousand. He was that is eight thousand damage on board, and he's at six. <laughs> so, all right, um, game three. Uh, you are probably going to have to choose. Uh, you have to come up with the idea. Is my opponent going to make me go first? Is going to make me go second? Um, invoked. They'll probably make you go second, perhaps. So something, um, can I see like who won? Can you scroll like, all the way? Is it possible won the rock paper scissors? Is that, is uh, that possible? His opponent won the rock paper scissors and let him go. And... Let the spiral player go second. Yeah. So okay. he he chose he the invoke player won rock paper scissors and went first. And okay, and still made evenly matched. Okay. I'm so doing... even though I saw evenly matched game one, them choosing to go first probably means they're gonna go first again game three is there a way to can all the way okay yeah he did and then just go first okay interesting so that now i'm just confused why they did that with three i mean i guess they just play three evenly matched um just like in case they lose their own have to go second which is which is understandable um so here i would imagine they would choose to go first again and i would imagine they would side out the evenly matched for like better going first cards 
So I'd probably just keep in. So he is going like, first, yeah, and he's yeah, going. Yeah, so I would assume and... he would go first, and that we are, and we have to go. And so, um, all right, this is a very good hand. I I like this hand a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, I like this hand a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, Gofu is very, very good going second. Um, it's not as good going first, but going second, it does a lot of different things. If they do nothing um, or do very little, it lets you put it, on, it lets you put through a ton of damage and sometimes OTK them even through a hand trap. If they do something, um, Ningirsu is just you just trade one for one with anything, so you uh, pretty much bait out their sleeper, you bait out one of their interruptions, you bait out their their, their mechaba most likely in this case, or you force them like if you if you make a Ningirsu into a, a bunch of back row, you force them to use their scapegoat or something like that. Um, like they have to chain it before you target it or anything like that because it doesn't target it just uh, selects a resolution mm -hmm. um so he's uh he's gone plus one with the desires um alistair plays let's see if he fuses yeah, he's actually just gonna say to here he hasn't fused the <laughs> i don't think he's fused turn <laughs> a single time this match uh but that's fine i guess okay so here i'd probably lead well i guess i would lead with gofu <laughs> because you have to pretty much yeah. um and then I think I'd go for Ningirsu. Ningirsu? Really? Maybe. Maybe. Mm. Let's go Maxi. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. All right. Maxi, the only time I play this deck and I actually get, like, mad when my opponent maxis me is on my Gofu. <laughs> Literally everything else, you you can usually, you can, like, stop and you can, like, do something else. Or, you know, you, you like, wait on tough age and you're, like, you, you just keep them on the board. Gofu is, like, you have a zero zero and two zero zero token. <laughs> yeah. So here, I guess you, like, you I'd probably, like, resort for tough and summon tough and then go for a back row see what happens and then probably make some sort of link monster to put something in my graveyard so it stays on the field right okay um so yeah i probably i was actually just thinking there um maybe it's yeah. best to just su summon drone and then pass because you don't want like resort to just destroy itself but if you're making a link monster i guess that's fine you however just, do you think it's really like worth letting monster. them have a plus one off the maxi i don't think okay so this is gonna sound this might sound very but this is something that you have to consider um this actually kind of goes back to like okay i don't agree with doing that at all whoa if my whew, i i wish my drones could get striked <laughs> yeah when i was under maxi whew, every time oh my god all right so that's how we win this game is now he can just resort for something and then just put drone back in his put put put, put drone back in his day i don't agree with strike there at all i think that was like atrocious but yeah what were you uh, saying about the letting your oh, right, okay. plus one? so uh tilt all right well now he has no cards anyway so <laughs> um so, okay so like uh, this kind of goes back to like Necroz, like when you got Max C or when like when like when like, Necroz Max seed you, like at a certain point, it didn't matter how many cards they had, like they could only play three, you know, they only have three different ritual spells. That's all they can do. You know, okay, I don't agree with this at all. Pretty, much. I don't think this is good. I think you pass. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah, I think at this point, after is he just he just forgot to draw off Max? Maybe maybe if it's been so both players. Maybe it's that's fine. what's happened, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, or do they? Is that what happened? I, I hope not. Yeah, hope I'm not. gonna be upset. If, I'm gonna be upset if that's what happened. Uh, he didn't forget Maxi was there. His opponent just didn't draw off Maxi. That's nice. Oh man. Oh, he just it's, so he's drawing off Maxi. He just didn't draw off Quick Fix. He just didn't draw on his own Quick Fix. Okay, this All is right. making Boral load. Okay, why did he search Last Resort? Why wouldn't he search <laughs> Big Red? What? 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 What's happened? Oh, <laughs> never mind. Okay. So this is, so I guess, okay. So this, so this is actually what I was about to get to with this is like, all right, this is, I agree with this hundred percent. I agree with every, I agree with literally everything I just saw there. Okay. Um, all right. Actually. Okay. Well, I actually, like, I think I just would pass, but like, if I were not to pass, this is what I would do. I think passing is like, after you get striked and like, they, they waste another card on your resort. Like you can just do all this next turn. It doesn't matter. You know, um, but what I was saying with the, um, 
like once at a certain point, right? He could draw every card in his deck, and he probably couldn't out this. You're like probably. Right. Um, I see what you mean. You know, so like you know, like you think about like what does invoked do? Like what is giving invoked like three or four cards actually allow them to do? Like nothing. Like they, you know, mm-hmm. especially now that we. Uh, with um, the new like link summoning, uh, they can only have one fusion monster unless they link summon. Like, which again, is, like, you know, how are they putting with, multiple monsters? Like, it on the doesn't. Board? It you know they can. He's only summoning one fusion monster. Like like, uh, as, like if he if you so if you in theory do not even activate, uh, if you don't even activate sleeper, you don't even attack with Borolo, and you just pass back, right? The invoked guy fuses with Aliester and the ogre to make Mechaba. Adds back Aliester, summons it again, has invocation, does nothing with it, sets some back row. Like he's not, you know, like he's not actually yeah. doing anything. I think like the only um, thing you can maybe do is like attack over the Moral Loads, discard Alistair, and negate. And then the you just like sleeper it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, and then and then oh, Boral yes. yeah. turns it to three thousand, mm-hmm. and then he like he can't even like yeah. It's like there's not you know there's not much that can be done here. So like. So, like, um, I still think at a certain point, right, uh, if you just pass, then he just has, like, three cards, and then you still have all these things you can do next turn, mm-hmm. and nothing that he's going to do will, like, really affect it that much. Um, but if you're going to do something, I think this is the best thing that you could do. You just establish a board that he knows invoked. Okay, I, I would also take it here. Uh, yeah, take okay, good, yeah. Um, you take it to make it even harder for him to actually fuse. Um, and then you just really though, because I mean, at this point, like they're so like up in card advantage. They're probably drawn an Alistair at this point, right? Or and a yeah, but that means that he only has he only has one, not two. So he can't like he can't like go discard the phase, discard two yeah, Aliasters. Okay. All right, that makes um, sense. So yeah, this is pretty over. Like Maxi didn't. I mean, like Maxi did did what it was supposed to. And I probably just like tunnel visioned of my like hatred for Maxi on Gofu specifically. Like Maxi responding to Gofu is like, uh it's so hard. Okay, so uh, this would be a way that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was sick. That that uh, that sick that he wasn't going to sleeper in the end phase for the scapegoat and the and the meltdown yeah like the set card like 100 so percent. Like, i would have end phase like tar- meltdown and that and that guy goes chain scapegoat and i'm like darn but i guess when you I, maybe had the read that it's scapegoat maybe forgot to activate sleeper not sure which one here i'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say he had the read on scapegoat um <laughs> to to like not use sleeper until after scapegoat got flipped which is sick if that's what happened, I suppose so, there's no point in popping the back row because like they've they've already striked you and they haven't striked the summon of sleeper, so it's like well, yeah, it's what not else is it going to be? Mm, yeah, maybe like that's true. artifacts or something. Um, but then he would have used it by now. No, I would I would imagine it would be like if it wasn't a trap, I would just think it would be like my opponent set a desire like a terraforming for no reason, just or not or not for no reason to like to make it less likely that my tough or my or my agent hits those cards, mm-hmm. so they can actually hit my helix. Um, and then like barring that, scapegoat is the only other thing because like cyclone would have probably been used on the last resort. Oh, well, would have been used on, on the last resort. Well, actually, no. Um, Although this actually is another reason why you wouldn't activate Sleeper in the end phase, is if that is Cyclone, if you Sleeper target itself, target the other two, and they chain Cyclone and banish your last resort, then your Sleeper dies and you lose. So <laughs> you lose your board, yeah. <laughs> and you lose your whole board. So not using Sleeper is, I actually think, the correct play there. Um, so that was very good. Um, uh, I'm not sure... So he's going to protect the Alistair. He, he's going to the Alistair with, with Sleeper. Okay. Do you think that's right? I just, I just kind of spaced out there for a second. I mean, I don't think that's fun. I think like when they when he does something that desperate, I think it's kind of telegraphs that that is only Aliester, mm, right? Yeah. So I think I think protecting it is fine there. Um, yep. And now you the game is over, like <laughs> like way over. 
So would you attack uh, for game here? Would you pop first? Or? I do. Uh, you see, okay, had I not thought about it more, I would have been like... So, after thinking about it, uh, no. <laughs> I would attack. Ooh, no! Okay, so he's going uh, to Cyclone. Here, no, not cy Cyclone target. Last resort, you lose. Uh, oh, Gamma. No, oh, that doesn't matter as much. That's okay. That's fine. <laughs> However, it just means he's not going to game him. So Yeah, that is what that means, yeah. Um, oh man. Because in this scenario, like, if you just attack directly, like, the only thing you're risking is, like, another scapegoat, which then you can pop to. Which then... you can just pop to, yeah, yeah. So in this one, I think you just, I don't know, it, it, it's interesting, like, so, like, when you're not playing and you're just watching, I think you get, like, you get a different... Sort a of different, perspective, like, yeah. You, uh -huh. Yeah, you get a different perspective on a, on a game, and it's very interesting um, that, like... This game, especially, I think I would have played very differently. Done something which I think was like objectively wrong. Is like, is like, it's funny that I said, well, that I was literally explaining why it's like correct to not care about the card you give them on maxi, and then ended that thought with, but I would pass. When like, <laughs> when like that is, you know what I mean? I, I I literally was like, well, giving them three cards doesn't matter, but I'd pass anyway. And then he just did what I said originally. I'm like, okay, yeah, that too. Like that works also. Um, but. Um, yeah, I don't think Sleeper in the... Okay. Oh, that's strange. <laughs> um, He's uh, sleeping before the invocation. I suppose maybe that's just trying to play around Merkaba, right? I don't think I would have Gammaed the Sleeper last turn. I think I would have just chained Scapegoat. You actually just... Oh, on part of the invoke player? Yeah, you just, yeah, you just keep two Go tokens up. Mm -hmm. and keep Gamma in your hand. Not that that really matters that much, but you keep two Go Tokens up when, when this turn starts, and you can fuse, and then make Mechaba, and he just have, like, two Go Tokens up, like, if that mattered. Yeah. Um. Hmm. I think it's pretty cool, though, that he, uh, no, like, realized that, okay, I have to, like, use Sleeper now on the Invocation, otherwise... Yeah, it's, yeah, it's or bad. else the Mechaba can, can banish it. I think. Can you have a Mechaba? And I would like. <laughs> I have not read that card enough times. That, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like I know w w what it like does, but oh, he's summoning the Alistair instead of like holding it in hand for like a honest effect. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm like, not really sure what he does here. Like, I'm not sure he does here either. Um. I don't think. I don't think holding it for Ooh. the honest. Okay. That's what he did. All right. That makes more sense. <laughs> Um, so something that's interesting with the link mechanic, and if he had kept those, if he had, maybe there wasn't a way to do this. I'm thinking like there might have been a way to put up a uh, link monster. No, the thing about the the link mechanic, it makes summoning invoked Elysium a lot easier. Mm. Invoked Elysium is one invoked invoked monster plus one monster summoned from the extra deck. So you use a link monster plus like an invoked monster, and I feel like it, there might have been some way if he had not turned, if he'd used scapegoat and like had more goats left, he could have made like a link monster. I don't know if Link Karibo is legal on DN yet. When they made like Radiant and then goes like Mechaba, then uses the Aliaster again and then makes Elysium and then Elysium banishes the whole board, you know, banishes Boreload and Sleeper. I'm not sure how realistic that was, but that's like something just out of my head. If I you know, that's what I would have, I guess, tried to do if I were him. I don't know if that was even possible, but... It's pretty next level. Uh, like, I would I would have thought of that at all. Yeah, that's like, I mean, I don't know. But um, yeah, that's us uh, finished the duel, so thanks for helping know. out. And... I think that's interesting. So I think um, the going second spiral uh, plays very differently against spiral than it does against basically anything else. Uh, I will refer to them lovingly as the bad decks, <laughs> which is to be, which would be like, trickster and invoked and like i'm even gonna group uh, maybe not abc in there but like ba uh you know like all Magician, the decks maybe? That, like yeah yeah actually magicians i think has they have their own like the way you play the deck against magicians is actually different from like from the way you play against spiral and the way you play against the other decks the magicians is, is weird i don't think it's that great but it doesn't play the same way as we think. it's like i call them the bad decks like, Trickster and Invoked are, like, the same deck. And, like, BA are, like, all the same deck. It's just, like, a small engine of cards that do something. Like, not much, <laughs> but something. And then, like, a bunch of, like, traps and hand traps and just, like, anti-meta cards. Yeah. 
And the way Spiral beats the mirror is they like hand trap them or like evenly match them, and then you establish your own board. And you kind of trade those for a while. Uh, Pendulum is different. Pendulum just makes like Baguska, so you have to like beat Baguska, and then like the the bad decks. Air quotes the bad decks. Um, it's they, just trying to fight just, through the. You 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 actually a lot of the time when you win you do, Helix is not involved. Like did I don't I think Helix resolved one time in that match. I think right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Helix resolved one time in that match. Helix is not usually involved because they just play their their small like eight to ten card engine and then thirty cards that say negate Helix. <laughs> so you have to play like a different game. You have to play tough agent control, and like Helix won't always be there for you. Like you're gonna get Reapered. You're gonna get all the time. Mm-hmm. You just like summon tough. Like I actually think going first against like Trickstar. I actually think summon tough equip last resort is like a game. win con. Yeah. Like they just can't beat that. It's so funny. If you if you big red back a drone in defense mode. They cannot beat it with their main deck. <laughs> like yeah, let's they have to go into their extra deck. It, it's like it's so funny. Um, but Wait, that's, just how, that's just, just how just how it is. Just if you big red back a drone, oh, big red right, says yeah. it can't be destroyed by battle. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you big red back anything, like they usually like they can't they can't out it. It's it's like kind of funny. Like like uh, that that deck um, like. Like Trickstar, I guess not Invoked. Invoked has a little bit of like a higher attack point ceiling because you can summon Mechaba and you can summon um, the Fire one that can like gain attack. But yeah. like Trickstar, like they can't beat anything over eighteen hundred with their main deck. Yep. And when they use their extra deck outside of using Scapegoat or Gofu, they neg a lot. So like the way you played this deck against like you know as like the the not Mirror and the not Pendulum deck is you usually approach it very simplistically. Um. And you just kind of do as few things that lose to hand traps as possible. And if you do eventually get a helix through, then you win 100% like immediately. But usually it's just tough and agent. Sometimes yeah. drone. All right. So this was super insightful. Um, thanks for helping and taking us Absolutely. through the place. Uh, for those of you who've watched this far, uh, appreciate it. And make sure to comment, like, subscribe. Let us know who you want to see next and what deck you'd like to see next and uh, being piloted and by who. Uh, and we can hopefully try to get that sorted for you. Um, any final thoughts or shout outs, Ryan? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> shout out to uh, Yu Gi Oh! organization. <laughs> I guess yeah. that's about it. My current sponsor. Shout out to Calvin Tahan, no, uh, of course. Yeah, shout out to Calvin, sort of. I don't actually know where he is right now. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, guys, and see you.